Welcome back to your favorite class, everybody. Um, just a quick reminder before we get started that we want to make sure that our cameras are turned on so that I can see your awesome faces. We want to make sure our distractions are put away. Right now I'm seeing one out of the three students I have, two out of the three students that I have who are locked in, their cameras are on. There we go, cameras on. Everybody's with me. If you notice in the chat box, you'll have nearpod.com in the chat. Can you go there and then type in this wonderful code, TXNMV, in the student box. Once you've logged in, you can just put your name and hit enter and I'm waiting for my students to log in. Once I see you log in, we can start our class. One student is logged in successfully. Still waiting on a couple more. Hope you guys have had a summer break that you have enjoyed. Two, two students have logged in. We one more. Give me a thumbs up if you got to go to the beach this summer. Okay, maybe you went hiking. Thumbs up if you went, you know, hiking. Uh, how about you went to a cool place along the mountain where a river came down? Thumbs up for that. Okay, yeah. All right, all three students are in, great. So by now you should see a slideshow that has my wonderful little bitmoji on it saying hi. Give me a thumbs up if that's what you see on your screen. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and click next because I've already said hello. Just a quick reminder of our Zoom norms. Attendance is just like in person. Your engagement, you're all in, you're locked in. And right now all of my students are locked in. Your mics are on mute unless I ask you a specific question and I tell you to read something on the screen. So please only chat in the box when I ask you to. We don't wanna distract each other as we have such a short amount of time together. And remember that at any time I can cold call or I can just randomly select you to answer a question that I've already predetermined in my beautiful mind that I'm gonna ask you. All right, we're gonna get started then on the next slide. Reminder to set up your screen, just like you would set up your desk in the classroom to maximize your focus. You should have your Zoom in gallery view. That means you should be able to see all students on one screen. And once you have done that, then make sure that you have your split screen. So you have Zoom on one side and you have your tab open to Nearpod on the next. Give me a thumbs up once you have that done. You have split screen with Zoom meeting on the left and then Nearpod on the right. Have you got that? All right, great. So, Lucas, I'm cold calling you first. Can you read the title of this lesson? A sort of sorts. Analyzing and sorting graphs. Thank you, Lucas. You can turn your mic off. In the chat box, can you give me a prediction of what you think this lesson will be about? What do you think this lesson is going to entail? In one phrase, one sentence, it could just be a couple of words. What do you think this chat's going to be, or this lesson is going to be about? In the chat box, give you 30 seconds. Absolutely right, Lewis. It is going to be about math. Lucas is like learning about graphs. We'll talk about spelling of learning later on. Um, and there we go. Yeah, you, you tried there, buddy, and I appreciate that. And then Javi's like, yes, it's going to be about graphing. Okay, so here's our warm up very quickly. Study this screen and see if you can in the next 45 seconds, 
write the coordinates of each point and name the quadrant or axis where the point is located. Remember that when we talk about coordinates, coordinates in a graph, we're talking about the x-axis and then the y-axis. So in the chat box, I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. If you were to look at point A, point A would be written as 5, comma, 2. If you agree with that, give me a thumbs up. If you don't agree with that, give me a thumbs down. Agree with that, Lucas? Louis, disagreeing with me? Always, always got to disagree with me, huh? But all right, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Now, study number or uh, letter B, C, and D, and see if you can think of what the coordinates will be. Don't write it in the chat. Instead, on the next slide, you'll see this is an open ended question. You'll see on your screen, you should be able to have the, uh, the option to add your response. Once you have that response written down, go ahead and make sure that you have that done. 30 seconds to do that. Give me a thumbs up once you have that answer. Are you guys able to see the question? Thank you for that feedback, Lucas. It keeps on going back and forth. So right now you should have that question in front of you. Please make sure that you have. Uh, let's go with just for the sake of time. Let's do B and C, okay? What are B and C? You've got those locked in. Make sure that you have those written down in the text box and then hit submit or hit enter. I'm going to go back to this screen so I can see what your answers were in the chat box because we weren't very uh, efficient. I'm not sure if this was on my end or if not. We'll work out the kinks in just a bit. For letter B, what is the ordered pair or the coordinates that you wrote? Cold calling. Javi. For B, I wrote two, comma one, and for C, I wrote one and negative four. All right, so let's go with B as your first choice. You said two, one. I noticed in the chat, Lucas has a different answer. Lucas, can you explain your answer to the team? Go ahead, Lucas. Um, what, what do you mean? You wrote a different answer for a letter B. You wrote two comma zero. Can you explain why you wrote two comma zero? Because um, for B, um, the B spot is in the X axis for two, and there it's not in an axis for the Y, so it's um, to come to zero. 
Right on, sir. You're absolutely right. Doing a great job there on the warm up. Here we go. And so let's move on to our learning goals. By now, um, we are going to be, or on this lesson, we're going to be reviewing and analyzing graphs and graphical behavior. We're going to determine similarities and differences among various graphs, and then we're going to sort graphs and give reasons for the similarities and differences between the groups of graphs. Now, in the chat box, I'm going to put in a link, and you're going to click on that link, and you're going to see uh, what's called a Jamboard. You're going to click that link, you're going to add your name to one of the slides that you see, and you're going to follow the directions on that Now you can add your name by writing with the pen feature that's on the left-hand side. You can just click that pen feature. You can write down your name. You can scribble it on the screen. And then you can follow the directions. Notice that the directions say sort the graphs using a sticky note to explain why you decided to group those graphs that way. I'm gonna share my screen since you guys don't have access because you're not as cool as I am right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you can see. You can make your predictions and we can move forward. Share screen. Here we go. You guys see those graphs? So in the chat box, you can start to write down what you think or how we can sort out those graphs. Give you about 45 more seconds. What do you think we can do? How would you sort those graphs? Twenty more seconds. I see all of my students right now focusing on their screen, typing in the chat feature. Y'all are looking sharp in your wonderful college preparatory polo shirts. I even got my green tie to match. All right, twenty more seconds, and I'm gonna look in the chat feature to see if you guys. Have noticed any similarities, any differences? What you got? What'd you come up with some similarities or differences? How did you sort them? Since I have now stopped sharing, I should see something in the chat. It shows me that you sorted them. We can sort the graphs by the direction they're going. That's a great answer. What else did you come up with? Thank you, Louis, for that. How would you sort those graphs? Hobby writes, all of these graphs can be organized by sorting them in sections of, oh, look at this, linear and nonlinear graphs. That's right. Great use of some vocab there. Now, I'm going to ask you in your screen or on your screen to flip back to where that Nearpod presentation was. And we're going to ask you this. Matthew grouped these particular graphs together. Now, why do you think Matthew grouped these graphs in this particular way? Ready for that cold call? 
in five, four, three, two, one. Javier, why do you think Matthew grouped these particular graphs in this group? You can turn on your mic. Is it because they all have the same y-intercept? Well, that's a great idea. They might have the, the same y-intercept. Another use of vocabulary there. Why else do you think Matthew might have placed these graphs in this particular group? Go ahead and in your chat box, write down your idea. Maybe you think just as Javi did, they might have the same y-intercept. The direction that the dots are going, that's another idea. Great answer, Lucas. Well, in your activity today, you'll be talking about types of graphs, such as this one, where you have these points that are not always going to be connected. I wonder if you did the pre-work and you saw one of the vocab words that are associated with this type of graph. So, we went over this question, I asked you to put it in the chat feature already and we talked about it. We move on to the last bit of slides here because we have unfortunately come very close to finishing our time together. And I wanna to ask you this, as you look at this heavy lifting rubric on your screen, based on how you participated in today's brief lesson, how would you score your heavy lifting? Would you give yourself a one, a two, a three, or a four? Would you say that you were honestly actively listening to the instruction and submitted 90% of the work? Did you actively listen and participate and submit 100% of the work? Were you actively listening and taking notes and then you submitted 100% of the work and you also worked to make sense of what other people were saying in class? Did you go above and beyond? Did you actively listen? Did you take notes? Did you submit your work? Did you make sense of what others were doing? And did you revise that and adjust your own work? How would you give yourself a score? Go ahead and put down your score on the screen if you have that capacity to do that on your Nearpod. I know before we weren't able to do that, but if not, you can put your score in the chat box too. I'll give you 10, nine, Five seconds to write down your score. I'm gonna check your notes, Javi, because you wrote down 10. I cannot believe you. You're amazing. Lewis, thank you for your honesty with the three. And Lucas, I'm gonna have to talk to your mother. With a one, giving yourself a one rating, oh my. Here are your independent study directions as you see it on the screen. You have three options of things that you're gonna be working on. Two of them must be done. So it's not really optional, sorry. In the 35 minute independent study block that you have coming up, you have some practice problems to work on based on the very short activity that we did together. You have a learning lab. This will be a running Zoom meeting with me. You have the option of joining it. You can come back and or you can stay in this group if you'd like some more practice. Together we can practice and we call that the learning lab. After our practice time is over, you'll have a five minute exit ticket that you'll take. And of course these activities with further directions are all found on our course in Canvas that you can access on your own time. Thank you guys so much for your undivided attention. I appreciate that very much. Hope that you have a wonderful rest of your independent study time, and I'll see you back later on today. Are you here for the learning lab, sir?